Hi, I'm Kirby Turner. I'm the author of the book, Learning iPad Programming, a hands-on guide to building apps for the iPad. In this episode, I'm going to share some tips about writing a universal app. Universal app is an app that runs natively both on the iPad and on the iPhone. This can be uh, a great benefit to the users of the app because they only have to buy one app and it can run on all their devices. But this comes at a cost to you, the developer, because in a sense you're writing two separate apps, an iPhone app and an iPad app, and packaging it up as one single app. This can make your code a little bit more cumbersome to write because you have to maintain knowledge within your code as to whether or not you're working on an iPad or an iPhone. But there are some conventions that you can follow to, to make life a little bit easier for yourself. The first is to name your resources such as your zip files with a tilde iPad or tilde iPhone. By doing this, the device itself will determine which is the correct nib to load. So for example, let's say that I have a, a root view controller and the root view controller is going to load the zip file root view. If I have two zip files, root view till the iPad dot zip and root view till the iPhone dot zip, iOS will load the appropriate device specific version of the zip file for you. So you don't have to include checks within your code. There are other situations where you're going to have to include checks within your code and when you do that you want to use the C macro UI underscore user underscore interface underscore idiom. That macro will tell you whether or not you're running on an iPad or an iPhone device. The last little tip I'll share when writing universal apps is that when you're using UI user interface idiom within your application, you'll find that you have a number of if statements scattered throughout your view controllers. You're constantly checking if UI user interface idiom equal iPad do this or if it equals iPhone do that. This can lead to bloated code and make it harder to maintain your code. A better approach is to subclass your view controller to device specific versions. Again, using the root view controller as an example, you would create a base class root view controller as your base class, your shared code that is device independent would go inside that view controller. You would then derive two additional view controllers. You would have a root view controller underscore iPad and root view controller underscore iPhone. And within those derived classes, you would include iPhone and iPad specific code. This will help you eliminate the user interface idiom check throughout your code. 